know I'm pretty. I love looking at you. All right, I better <laughs> see the front of my face from now on. <gasps> Nothing you can say will make me turn away. <gasps> Anyways, we want to talk to you guys today a little bit about some of the things we did as a family when the kids and all of us were younger. Okay, from the time that Haley was nine months old, for the next several years, we spent one month at a Boy Scout camp. Sorry, two months. Yeah, I would say, what, what camp were you at? We spent I, two I months. I was there for two months. <laughs> two months at a Boy Scout camp in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. and we have pictures of Haley on our backs the whole time. Uh, we bought a little Snuggly from like Target. Is that the brand? The Snuggly it brand? Was a snuggly it was a brand. it was cheap, like twenty bucks. Yeah. Everybody else was buying the baby Bjorn, do you remember? Yeah. Like the hundred dollar one, and we were like, Ain't hey, nobody got any coins for that. Yeah. So uh you say on our back, she was on my back. Because you were out rock climbing and white water rafting, <laughs> she was on my back, let's be real. Just so you know, I have video evidence that she was on my back too. Not during white water rafting and rock climbing That's and true. backpacking. That's true, but there is evidence and I'm gonna show it. <laughs> While we were there, it was only about 10 miles from Yellowstone, maybe less than that, five miles from Yellowstone, our Boy Scout camp. And we spent every Saturday going on some kind of adventure. We, we started hiking all of the backcountry trails. <laughs> There's the lake. Oh, you see it already? Yeah. Haley, what are you looking for? Monster. What kind of walking are you guys doing? Man, it feels so good up here. Crazy walking. In Yellowstone, anything that was under, what, about five miles? We never did more than five miles, and we carried the kids. Like, they were we in the backpacks, the because even when Andrew came along, well, Haley would hike, and Andrew was then in the snuggly. Mm -hmm. We hiked to Lone Star Geyser, and I've got Haley on my back, or Andrew on my back, and Haley on my shoulders. We carried the kids. We did, but they were used to being outside because we basically lived outside. Yeah. And then Haley is so stubborn that even when she was, what, two and a half or whatever that was, two and a half, almost three, we were like, Haley, if you don't hurry up, we're going to carry you. And she'd be like, no, don't carry me. That whole hike to Lone Star Geyser was her in these little stupid flip-flops. Oh my gosh, the pink flip-flops. The pink flip-flops. They were Running well. because she didn't want to be carried. We're coming back. We're coming back from Lone Star Geyser. So it's about two and a half miles back. We're two and a half to three miles back. Some Beautiful little trail. Mm -hmm. So pretty. We're about halfway back. There's like a little creek with a bridge. And I'm thinking, oh, we can take a family picture on this bridge. And it will be like so picturesque and it will be so lovely. And so we go out there and we're sitting next to each other. And I'm like, okay, go ahead and take the picture. And Haley's got her little flip flops and her feet are hanging off the side. And I'm like, Haley, don't you kick these shoes off. I will not be happy with you. It was the fire hole river, by the way. Like, it's not just a little creek. No, it's fast. <laughs> sure enough, she stands back up. She's got one shoe. <laughs> and the other one is floating down the river. Floating down the river. And I stand there and I look at the shoe and I look at Dave. And we're trying to figure out who's going to chase after it. I'm trying to figure out it. if it's even worth it to go after this stupid shoe. But then she has no shoe at all. And we were like three miles back. So I ran into the river and got the stupid shoe. Yeah. <laughs> the lesson is don't let your kids wear flip-flops while yeah. you're hiking. There's yeah. the lesson. There you go. So we didn't even have great shoes for everybody <laughs> no. to do these types of things. But you know what? We survived. Every day off that we had, which was once a week, we would go to Yellowstone or and Cody hike. and hike. Yeah. And that, we took Haley Whitewater rafting when she was two? Two, two and a half. Two and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were in Texas. We okay. went around, around Lake Texoma. Once again in the backpacks. Yeah, cross mm -hmm. Sabres Trail. So we did lots of hiking in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, because it was free. It was free. <laughs> and we, we couldn't pay money to go to movies or dinner or shows, but hiking was free. And here's a clue for those who are scared of hiking. It's walking. Honestly, I think hiking was the activity that we chose because it was the cheapest. Mm -hmm. But I grew up hiking. So hiking is one of the things that we did a lot as family. Um, we carried the kids. We did whatever we could to get the kids out. Then we moved to North Carolina and really hiking wasn't a big thing in North Carolina because we were out towards the coast. But the beach was. In North Carolina, we didn't have a whole lot of other choices. I was in the house all the time trying to do schoolwork, but we did want to get out. So we found out that the beach was the free. best thing Free! The beach is free! The beach was also free. 
And so we swam to the beach. <laughs> we no, we didn't. No, we didn't. Uh, where we lived in North Carolina, we had to take like two ferries. Two ferries to get to the beach. We had to drive like basically two hours to get there, but it was worth it. We tried to go at least once or twice a month, especially in the summers. We found a beach called Fort Macon over in the North Carolina like Outer Banks area, which was shallow. Like it was shallow for so far out and it didn't get huge waves. So super safe for little kids. And then they had a cool fort there and really nice showers. So yep. if you're in the area, the Fort Macon Beach was like my favorite. This. When we got here to Idaho, uh, Haley was nine. Yeah. And Ryan was two. Mm -hmm. Well, not even. Not even two. Almost two. Right. We started to get back into hiking again because there was great hiking around here. Um, but we also heard a lot about mountain biking in this area. We had never really tried a whole lot of mountain biking as a family until we got here. Well, it's hard to do. It was where, hard to do. Where we were. Yeah. Uh, we started by borrowing trailers uh, from friends, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, this is like so a joke, but not really. Like, I know. You guys, if you want to do fun things, but you don't have any money, what you need to do is you make friends with the people that have the things that you want to do. That was the case here with the bike trailer. Our friends down the street had like some sweet bike trailers and we would borrow them like that fit the kids it was the Thule mm -hmm. chariot bike trailer which is amazing by the way if you want to splurge on one that one's somebody best. gave us a trailer yeah gave it to us in texas we kept it all those years and we took that in some places mm -hmm. and then we ended up buying a single it's the we ride the we ride kind of single axle it um it's like a little pedal bike that hooks onto the seat post highly recommend it was great yeah because that way you could take your kids on single track yeah we'll leave all these links down below we picked up that we ride on amazon for not about 60 dollars or so and we used it for a long time i just sold it the other day for 30. really i did you sold it for 30. i sold it for 30. we had it for a long time i know <laughs> i i will say we did other things like museums only on free day <laughs> This is like the story of how to do entertainment for free. <laughs> but it's true. Like there's there's some museums that'll have like a free day if you're a member of this bank or like mm -hmm. Yellowstone. All national parks have some days that are free. Like free national park day. They have them a couple of times a year. I don't know about this year, but usually. So we would look up those days and we would go those days. Christine put together a whole trip to Washington DC where you got to go to the zoo and the Smithsonian's all over Thanksgiving break. We did that whole vacation on the cheap. Yeah, I got stories about that one. I didn't even want to pay for parking next to the Smithsonian's. So we hiked, we hiked like two miles. So I found like the only free parking lot and we got there the second they opened. So like no one else got it. Wasn't no, it like, wasn't it over by the Jefferson Memorial? It was far away. Dude, it was far. And we like hiked all the way in. <laughs> and a bunch of the kids fell asleep in the car. Oh, that was good. Our hotel was a 40 minute drive away. It was by the airport. Uh, so we did a lot of museums when yeah. the kids were younger. Yeah. Um, Free ones. <laughs> state parks. Yeah, those are great. A lot of state parks. Mm -hmm. They have, lots of times they have rangers, they have, they do tours and tell the kids about the animals in the area. There was state parks we went to in North Carolina, there were state parks in Idaho and Texas. Are we allowed to talk about how we got the kids to hike? I'm thinking about the hike that we did to Inspiration Point in Teton National Park. We had seen pictures and it, it is just, it's so picturesque, like there's no words for it. Ryan was only like two. Yeah, he was two and it's a, it was a five or six mile total because we hiked around the lake because we were too cheap to pay for the ferry across the lake. So we were like, whatever, we don't have True. the money for that, we're hiking around. So it ended up being five miles and then the end part is quite steep. And Ryan was two and he did the whole thing. And people always ask me like, how do you get your kids to do this? How do you get your kids to do this? treats <laughs> water breaks like you you rest a lot you give them sugar and, and you carry them when it gets hard and you carry them when it's hard like you carried ryan a lot that last section yeah and then he walked a lot of the downhill because it was easy but oh that hike up to mount washburn that first time Ooh. dude that was so hard i gotta look at the stats on that hike that hike is so steep it was even me like you and I were trading off carrying Ryan on our shoulders. He's like three. It was hard. And us, we had to rest every three minutes. It, was, it took a long time. Puffing and puffing, taking forever. 
but we stopped a lot for rest and water and fruit snacks. <laughs> I will say, it's always really important to pick an activity that's, up, that's within the range of your kids, uh -huh. like zone of proximal development. This yes. is my teacher side coming out, right? Like this is just, just beyond where they want, where they're comfortable being, right? I've not done good all the time. <laughs> There's just been other times, especially when it comes to biking, that we've chosen the trails that are just okay. in really bad shape. So, that was very recent. Yes. And it was in a state park. So yeah. I will say state parks are one of our favorite places to do things, whether it's hiking or whatever it might be. Right? What else are you going to do in a state park other than hiking? Oh, yes, mountain biking. Cross-country skiing. Cross-country skiing is the best. We like that a lot. We took the kids cross-country skiing a couple times. Well, you have to rent the gear if you don't have it. But. We rented the gear and we got a discount because we rented six or more. <laughs> yeah, we were a group. If you've got rock climbing in the right spots, right? Rock climbing can be a good activity for kids because it's pretty safe. You hook up the ropes and you get the belay system all worked out right. If you know what you're doing on rock climbing and you've got good rock climbing close, top roping kids is so easy and fun. I just want to throw in a disclaimer because rock climbing can be dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, for the love, do not go rock climbing. Like, he's, he's been certified in rock climbing. He has then trained me how to do it. So I do know, I know the knots, I know how to do it. I know, I've led climbed and I can belay pretty well. But if you don't know what you're doing, oh my gosh, someone can get hurt. So I'm just, that's my disclaimer. I remember taking Haley rock climbing when she was three. Yep. And she went up 50 feet like yeah. it was no big deal. They do make like full body child harnesses. Like they are fairly safe if you know what you're doing. Yeah. So that's... What were we trying to accomplish as we chose these activities for our kids? I'm trying to avoid raising uncultured swine. <laughs> funniest, comment, funniest comment we got the other day, it was on Christine's channel, but they just said, well, oh what a gosh. terrible mother she is. They couldn't stand having a mother like her that forces the kids to work so hard, to bike so far. To do chores. And to do chores. I can't believe you make your kids do chores. It was <laughs> hilarious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so if you are in that camp, I'm sorry. <laughs> this video is not, not for you. you. You should probably go look at another channel. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay, I'm a big fan of pushing anybody outside of their comfort zone because your comfort zone is not where growth happens. I have heard confidence described as the struggle to do something that's hard and then accomplishing it, no matter what it is, gives you a sense of confidence. Now there's several definitions that I've heard depending on what you're talking about, but that's one of them. Yeah. So they do something that's a little scary, that's difficult, but when they do it, they're like, oh my gosh, look at what I've done. The kids felt that way about the bike ride that we just did. We were just like, we just rode 109 miles. Who can do that? We can. We can do that. Their confidence is high. Is high. When we took the kids climbing up Table Rock. Oh dude, that was so hard. Which was like a 4,000 foot climb in like four or five miles. I have a video on that on my channel. We'll leave down below. We'll leave a link down below. Um, the kids being able to say they've done something that somebody else hasn't. Man, that, that's just... You guys just climbed a mountain. What are you gonna do next? Go down. Go <laughs> <laughs> Climb down a mountain. Man, that's killer. All right, let's hike down. I'll say, Christine and I have both read books like Grit and The Growth Mindset, right? If you haven't read those books, I'll leave the links down below. They're some of the best books I've seen on, on teaching, learning, raising kids to be... Um, Kids that are resilient. Yeah. And that's what we're, our ultimate goal is. That goals, kids that want to be adventurous, um, never stop learning, and never stop being curious. I like maybe raising kids who turn into adults who be like, wow, I've never done this thing, whatever, fill in the blank. This thing over here, that looks a little hard, a little scary, but I'm gonna give it a go because yeah. I'm not scared to try. And we're definitely not perfect, right? Like we did not get out and hike every weekend most of our lives. Um, we did not get the kids out of the house all the time when we were busy trying to make ends meet and I was working two or three jobs at a time. What's, what's your main takeaway? 
it's possible at all stages of life you just have to be creative and and do the thing that's that people do in your area yeah we've definitely done what is available in our areas we've done kind of what some of the locals do yes make friends with the locals so in our next video we'll definitely talk about how we find uh, the right communities and resources to make these things happen the most um, I got a lot of resources, a lot of tips for that one. So stay tuned for that one. So I guess our question for you guys is what types of things do you do with your kids to help them be adventurous and resilient and curious? You want to leave it there? I guess we'll leave it there. <laughs>